What's up everybody, Mr. Steve. I've got an update for Blender 4.4 Alpha. The beta version comes out in a couple weeks. Um, somewhere around mid-October, we should have the 4.5 LTS release. And then near November, December, maybe even in January, due to dev times, we're gonna have Blender version five. That's insane. I was talking about that a couple of years ago. I knew we would get there, it's coming, and Blender's getting better all the time. So the first update, is you think I'm just in look dev here, but I'm really not um, in look dev with this with a painted face or a different material on it. This is the new face orientation and it's pretty cool because now the blue does not show just like it would over here in Blender 4.32 or lower. So if we go into the overlays, turn on face orientation. Yeah, that's what we get now over here in Blender 4.4 alpha. You can see face orientation is on, off, on, off, on, off. Okay, so now let's go take a quick little look inside the mesh. This is exactly what you would expect to see. And of course, if you were to come over here and try to bevel these corners, you know you're not gonna get to do it. So you could go, hey, I wanna recalculate them outside or just rather flip the normals. Uh, now this thing will bevel correctly and everything is good. Now here's another update that may not seem as big a deal, but is definitely important. If I go into face mode here, you know from before, you'd have to come in and turn on developer extras to get indices to show up as a button. And you would see the indices, excuse me, right over here. Okay, so we'll turn on indices, and this is still Blender 4.4, and if I turn off developer extras, guess what? it's still there. So if we were to come back over and switch to Blender 4.3, now we can go in, let's grab our object, let's jump into edit mode, and we'll see indices is here. Let's go into edit, preferences, and turn off developer extras. And now we'll see that is actually gone. <laughs> and we're stuck with it. So now let me turn developer extras back on and we have indices. So we turn developer extras off and it's gone. So there you go. Uh, that is a small but quality of life upgrade, which I think is actually pretty good. Well, we've all done this before. And with this Blender update, this is gonna help you guys out. So if you have an active object, didn't realize it, let's just say I'm holding shift because I wanted to select six here, whatever, and then I, f okay, finally got that. Don't remember this one selected. I hit H to hide. I'm none the wiser for a little while, and then maybe I've animated or I've added keyframes, God knows what, so here you go. If we go black, uh, back over into Blender 4.4 Alpha, I've done the same mistake, obviously, here, and I hit H to hide. I get a courtesy info down here in the Blender uh, status report bar, and I'll know that seven objects were hidden when I only had six. So I can either scrub through here and find out what they were, or I just hit Alt H, bring it back and go, yep, that was what I did not wanna do. And then let me come back in and select these and hit H to hide. Now I've got six objects and that's a useful update. And compositing has gotten a big update for the glare node. So let's take a look at that. I was actually pretty excited to see this so now you have a glare node and I'll just drop this in. And the cool thing is that this has outputs. So you can just output the image. It, well, the combo, that's gonna be like the mix node in a way. And so you can output the glare and the highlights or just the glare, okay, which is <laughs> so cool, or just the highlights. And this is the active, viewport compositor turned on to always and i'm in look dev or ev engine which is pretty good and i think when you're over in ev let me just switch over real quick you do want to make sure that you turn on ray casting this makes a huge difference in how things look and so now we can go to uh, streaks you can put on bloom and we can get the combination of all of this. And there's obviously a lot of stuff in my scene here. I'll just turn on scene lights and scene world. And then from here, you know, you have some other things. You can change the quality to high, low, or medium. There's actually highlights threshold in here. We won't go covering everything. There's a strength adjustment, which is pretty cool. And I went ahead and dropped an emissive 
uh, texture on one of these cubes so we can just kind of look at this a little bit and play with it. So we've got the threshold value, you've got the smoothing, and interesting, they're going to um, work on the bloom here to get this closer to the original EV engine bloom, which I do miss. And I did make an add-on for that actually. Uh, so you've got the strength here and I am passing out the uh, combo there. So that's good. You can change the tint, which is cool. You can kind of play around with how the thing looks. And I've just got a different color picker if anybody's curious. You can change your color picker in the preferences. I believe that's going to be over in system interface. Okay, it's an interface and color picker type. You can change this so you get something a little different here. And I think that's just kind of a good way to work. It depends on where you're coming from, what software. Um, there's different things you can choose here. I don't like any of those. My favorite is the square HS. Um, so there we go. And there's the glare node. Uh, also, while we're in here, we can grab this. And as you're expanding this out, if you hold control, you've now got a horizontal grid snap for this. So you don't have to go like, woo, way too far. And you can just snap it that way. And that works out nice. All right, now this next one is gonna be interesting. I haven't actually tested this one out, but you're supposed to be able to rotate this and then lock the rotation to view. So I'm gonna go up here. I believe we would go to view. And yep, so there is a lock rotation button here. And if we jump back over into Blender 4.3, which is somehow an old version already, then we can go to view and we only have lock to 3D cursor or lock camera to view. So now if I lock to rotation, then I can see that the I can't middle mouse wheel at all. And this could technically be good. Shift middle mouse works nice. So maybe I am just working in this area and I'm trying to do something and I don't want it to come out of that um, rotation. And so, yeah, that's pretty neat. That works good. So if I rotate the view this way, I'm now locked into that rotation. So there you go. That's something that I think could actually be extremely helpful. Um, I still can control middle mouse as well. I just can't quite pan around and do anything else. All right, now creating new windows. If you wanna split windows, you get the crosshairs down here and you do this thing. Um, you're able to kind of make this little tiny squished window. That may be what you want, not necessarily something I like, but okay. So we jump back over to Blender 4 point alpha. What's the big deal? Well, now the big deal is if you do this, it snaps to a minimum, which is good. So the idea behind this was so it could be turned into a timeline and it just makes a little bit more sense. You actually can operate with it this way. Not bad at all. Um, I like to have a huge timeline, but I think this is probably a little better. Gives you a little bit more room to work inside the 3D viewport. Now, I haven't used this a whole lot, but you can use Sculpt Vertex weight paint brushes now, and they're going to prov uh, provide the mouse location. Uh, what this is gonna do is gonna force the operator to calculate the stroke positions more accurately. So you should get a more accurate stroke when doing things like this. So it's something I encourage you guys to explore on your own, but this seems to work pretty good. And uh, I think before maybe it was not you know, calculated them quite as accurately or bleeding over. So this is good. I like it. Now moving on to the next thing. All right, guys, this one's a sore spot for me and I'm sure a lot of other creators and devs have just been plagued by this. You go in, your asset browser is categorized by name. And if you got used to that, well, don't worry, you've got some breaking changes coming in Blender 4.4. It's all categorized by type now. Uh, so we've got some different items here that are all gonna be categorized correctly. 
And if this is a little bit of a pain point for you one way or the other, don't worry, you'll get used to it. There's gonna be even more breaking changes in Blender 4.5 when it comes out LTS and then Blender 5, which is gonna be the end or beginning of next year. So that one is, I think, another very big housekeeping and getting all of these in order just makes a lot of sense. So if you had to get used to or some type of format to try to organize this thing in your head, well, you don't have to do that anymore. Blender 4.4 Alpha has got your back. Now let's go into the edit and preferences in Blender 4.4 and let's go into themes. Let's go into user interface and let's scroll down till we get to styles. Okay, here we go. So you've got an active editor outline and you can, you can see it is there. But if you want to make that a little bit more pronounced and not so alpha, what we'll do is we'll just drag this and let's do something like this and change the alpha just a touch. And now you can see it's a much more pronounced blue. So sometimes I've got three screens open, right? So I don't know where my mouse is sometimes, but I can look for that or I could just change it to something like that it's not too intrusive it's not too much of a pain i think you'd get used to it uh, but that is another option for you and that's another quality of life improvement thanks to blender we appreciate you guys a lot oh and uh, another quick tip here i forgot to mention this but if you are doing the um, horizontal split here for the timeline and we'll just turn this back into a timeline the scroll bar automatically disappears if there's not enough room for it which is good and on top of that if you wanted to grab one of these areas you could move that it'll say move area here outliner or i can snap it into a, hor a vertical or horizontal and i can either replace this area which it says uh, there now as the tooltip, or i can move that area over here which is really really cool i don't mind uh, that one little bit, but I can bring it right back over there and that's it's like for scene organization You don't even need an add-on or like to stress yourself out over that anymore This is like this easiest thing ever if I wanted this over here great You see how quick I'm uh, doing all this and replacing it and I did kill one uh, Thing there, but no big deal. It's pretty easy to fix all that anyways, that's great and unfortunately, I couldn't find an example where this was happening. But now if you were to come in here and change something like the metallic or whatever, and sometimes, and I have experienced this, but I don't remember where it was, you can now reset to default value and it should literally work on everything. So if you reset to default value, it will snap back now. And that was a commit from 2021. So that's been a long time coming. Lots of little bugs in there and things that did not work that are getting fixed. So Blender 4.4 is gonna be by far the most stable version Blender has ever released. I thought it was 3.6, but I had no idea how many bugs were in there because I took an entire year off to learn uh, Python and add-ons and things like that. So there you go, there's another quality of life improvement. Now here's one that's pretty cool. This one's in geometry nodes and if you select this in the dope sheet, the node here, I'm just going to hit F2. I don't want to rename this to my, uh, I don't know, we'll just call it animation one. And this is geometry nodes uh, 0001. And I just want to put this as offset one. And what you're going to do now in the dope sheet is you're going to see the name of the actual modifier and you'll see the value of the node you have active as animation one. That's actually really cool and it's gonna help you sort things out, I think a lot quicker. And if there isn't anything on that particular node, probably doesn't show up, but uh, there you go, there's another one. So this is the last one I've got for you guys. This is while playing an animation with tooltips on, it doesn't show anywhere. This is in Blender 4.3.2, so let's pause this and move over to Blender 4.4. And now that I'm over here, just wanna drop in the timeline. I'll hit play and let's check out tooltips. Yep, tooltips work for sure. That's kinda of cool. 
You never know when you need to see something like, hey, what's this? It's noise texture input one default value. There you go. So that's it. I appreciate everybody watching. Um, drop in the comments whatever you guys thought was useful or you want to see Blender change. And who knows, maybe in the next uh, Blender today, Pablo will uh, listen to me or somebody else and we'll get that message across. See if we can get that to be a commit. Uh, thank you for watching once again. I appreciate all my subscribers. I'm moving close to like 6,000 subs right now. So that's awesome. And uh, yeah, I just look forward to Blender 5.0 coming out at the end of the year. See you guys.